If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Hello and welcome to Spirit Guides Thursday Thoughts. This is the place where you will get to hear snippets of conversations I've had with people over the years and get a variety of thoughts for you to consider for today. Enjoy! You know, is it even possible to summarize who Kelly Sparta is? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, well, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you the short story. Um, my mother was a new ager and she raised me in the new age movement. And according to her, I was talking to ghosts in my crib. So I've been doing this my whole life. At the age of six, she brought home EST, which was a precursor to the, to the landmark forum. She brought home countless guided meditation and spiritual tapes. And we listened to JC Knight and Abraham Hicks and y- you name it, messages from Michael. I read every book and she sent me to psychic development classes. And, and this was all throughout your formative years. All throughout my childhood. Wow. Yeah. So I really developed my skills very early on. I had the American dream. I had the big house and the dog and the trophy husband and the not not kids, thankfully, because I was about to dump everything. And um, <laughs> I was a successful business owner and a pillar of my community and running a nonprofit. And I mean, I had everything that everybody said was the trappings of success. And I hated my life. I was in a never ending power struggle with my husband. I was burnt out in my job. The the nonprofit I was working on was in challenge and I was turning it around. I was tired and I was not happy and I was pissed because I had been sold a bill of goods by the American dream that said, this will make you happy. And I was not. Yeah. And so I said, okay, well, this didn't work. And I just chopped it all off and I divorced my husband. I sold my business. I sold my house. And I moved out of state to live with a bunch of people I had met at the Renaissance Fair that, you know, joined the hippie commune, right? <laughs> it wasn't a hippie commune, but it was, you know, it was a bunch of roommates who all worked at the Renaissance Fair. And as it turned out, coincidentally, who were all freaking shamans. <laughs> I didn't, I'd never heard of shamanism in all of my metaphysical new age occult, you know, all of this paganism did not come up in all of the stuff I had studied for all those years. So that was the first sort of introduction to it for you. It was the first introduction to it. And I ended up in a magical circle with four other people. And we did ritual and we did energy healing work on one another. We spent four years living in what I now refer to as the magical house because magic was happening every day, all the time. We were all on our spiritual paths. We were all doing our own work. We were going to events. We were bringing stuff home that we learned from each other. We were helping each other along the journey. It was really a communal process of evolution that was happening in that house. And we had people who moved in and out of the house during the four years I was there. And all of them brought their own piece of spiritual stuff into the mix. What is a shaman? So if you ask a hundred shamans what a shaman is, you'll get a hundred different answers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shamanism is not a defined term. It's, it's actually the word shaman comes out of Russia and every tribal culture everywhere in the world has its own version of a shaman. The way that I see shamanism is Uh, that a shaman serves as the translator or bridge between the physical world and the spiritual world. That person is in service to a community or tribe, if you will. Mm -hmm. Each shaman will have different gifts that they use because we all have natural abilities. And so for me, I'm a healer. That's really my thing. I'm a healer. I carry the energy of change with me wherever I go. So this isn't just what I do. It's who I am. The journey brings you to be the person that you become as a shaman. Uh, People always think, well, I I could never do that. It's like, look, you know, nobody can do it before they walk the journey. 
You know, I couldn't do it when I first started. I And I was talking to ghosts in my crib, and there was no way in crap when I was getting married at 21. There's no way I could have done the things that I did and that I've done in the interim uh, without going through the path that I took to get there. So you keep saying walk the journey. What does that mean? I always tell people, they're like, oh, I want to be a shaman. I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> you know, shamanism is a calling. It, it literally comes up, grabs you by the throat, throws you on the ground and says you're mine, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't want to be a shaman. I never wanted to be a shaman. I didn't even know what a shaman was, right? <laughs> but the journey of being a shaman is is a never-ending path of personal growth, never-ending path of looking at the dark places that you don't want to look at in your life and bringing light to them so that you can heal them then doing that for others. Okay, so my mind is blown up a little bit right now. Okay. When you talk about a shamanic death, mm-hmm. and that being sort of the the death of the ego, mm-hmm. isn't that something that we're striving for, is to, to remove ego? Is shamanic death a good thing or a bad thing? So shamanic death is is a good thing. It is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it doesn't feel like a good thing. No, <laughs> that, that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking here. <laughs> Think about it. I mean, your ego is your personality. Your ego has a consciousness. It it says, "I want to exist." It has a survival mechanism, just like anything else, mm-hmm. and so it resists dying. It thinks it's protecting you. Wow. It's it's a survival mechanism, not just of the ego, but also of yourself, because you put that ego in place to protect you. And it did for a while, a long while, most of the time. You survived your childhood by using these coping mechanisms. Because you've had to build these layers and layers and layers on top, covering the, the authentic component exactly. of yourself. Exactly, because somewhere along the line, you got told that the authentic you wasn't okay. <laughs> and so you tried to become something that was okay. And that's it for this week's Thursday Thoughts. Join us tomorrow for the Ascend Day on the Spirit Guides podcast. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, I